Okay, welcome to our exam three review. Uh, so these are questions and question types that you will see on your tests. Uh, so please make sure you know how to answer all of these questions. Uh, and if you have any questions about any of the setups or anything that I wrote, uh, please email me and let me know ahead of time uh, for this third test. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at is just a, a quick review of composition of functions. Um, we need to make sure that we are aware of what this symbol means and how it works since we're going to use it for uh, number three when we talk about inverses. So um, I just realized there's this really strange double equal sign. So we'll see if that disappears when I upload the review sheet. All right, so f of g of x, um, what I want to identify about this is which function is on the outside. And in this case, it's f. So I'm going to rewrite f and express it with a blank. And the blank is wherever that x is, and then I'm going to fill the hole. Well, what do I put inside that hole? I'm gonna put 5x minus three. Okay, so then from here, I am going to FOIL that out and multiply. So 5x minus three times 5x minus three minus four. And so that gives me 25x squared uh, minus 15x and then minus 15x plus 9 minus 4. So notice when you multiply, you're multiplying four sets of things. So you should have four things when you multiply it together and that minus 4 at the end. And I can see some of this does combine. So 25x squared minus 30x uh, plus 5. Okay. Uh, number two, we're asked to find f of g of negative four. You know, well, I went to all that trouble uh, in number one to find uh, f of g of x. I might as well use it. So 25 times something squared minus 30 times something plus five. And what are we going to put in that blank? I'm going to put in negative four. And uh, I understand if you think you need a calculator on that. That's, I think the first thing is 25 times uh, 16. So. Uh, so you should end up with 400. A negative and a negative give me plus uh, 120 plus 5. So when I add those three numbers together, I should get 525. Uh, number three, we're asked to find the inverse, or sorry, use composition of functions to show that the following are inverses of each other. So what that means is I want to do f of g of x, and then I want to flip the order around and do g of f of x, and see if they both reduce down to x. Okay, so in this case, f is on the outside, so 1 over something minus 3. And so what do I fill in that hole with? I should fill it in with uh, g. So 3x plus 1 over x. And I'm going to go ahead and set up the other one real quick. So in this case, g of f of x, which one's on the outside? Well, that would be g. So 3 times something plus 1 over something. Well, what do I put in that blank? Uh, I'm going to put the f one. So at 1 over x minus 3 and 1 over x minus 3. Okay, so now I need to simplify uh, both expressions. Let's see, in this first one of f of g of x, uh, I need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply by that by x over x. And that's 1 over uh, 3x plus 1 minus 3x all over x. Then we're going to come down here. And what do we notice about the three x's? Those guys cancel out. So we're left with 1 over 1 over x. And using our fraction rules, that actually simplifies down to x. OK. So, so far, it's looking pretty good to be an inverse. Uh, the next case, so this uh, g of f of x, uh, I still need a common denominator. So we'll kind of come back over here. So that 1, I'm going to multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3. And so I get, uh, let's see, 3 times 1. So 3 times 1 plus 
1 times x minus 3. So that's just x minus 3 up top. That's 1 over x minus 3. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. We get uh, the 3 times 1 minus the 3. That cancels out. So I'm left with x over x minus 3 over 1 over x minus 3. So then we have those fraction rules. So x over x minus 3 times x minus 3 over 1. And the x minus 3s divide out, and I'm left with x, right? So what does that mean? Because I got x's simplified down to x both times. That means f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. But again, I have to show all of that math to indicate that they are that they do simplify down to the same expression, both simplify down to x. Number four, we're asked to find a uh, sketch a graph of the inverse uh, given the following image. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go in here and find some ordered pairs. Uh, so this point right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. So it's negative 5 comma negative 3. So its inverse is going to be, and just switch the ordered pairs around, uh, negative 3, negative 5. So I'm sorry, uh, it's pi, oh, that's right. Uh, sorry, it's negative 3 comma, negative 5 comma positive 3. So if I switch the order around, and go 3 comma negative 5, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, I'll switch colors here, right there. So 3 comma negative 5 is the inverse point that corresponds to that. Uh, then we want uh, 2 comma 3, so 3 comma 2 would be that inverse point. Sorry, I keep forgetting I'm supposed to switch colors. Okay, so 3 comma 2. Uh, then we want, uh, what is that, 1, 2, 3, three comma 0, so 0 comma 3. So 0 comma 3 right there would be that inverse. Uh, and then last but not least, this open circle here, so that's at so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so that inverse would be at 6 comma 5. Uh, so let's see. 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. All right, now for the hard part. Uh, so I'm going to connect in those two points, and that's going to, let's see, be some sort of curve. So I want it to curve that way and then curve up. So it should look something like that. Yeah, that's not confusing at all, is it? Um, but if done correctly, it should be symmetrical through the line y equals x. So that picture looks symmetrical, so that's fine. Um, and on this type of question on the exam, I, d I am going to look for the labeling, that you did label the points correctly, and that the graph does look like it should look. All right, on number five, uh, I'm going to give you an equation, and we're going to find the we're going to actually find the inverse. Okay, so if you recall, the process is I'm going to swap out that f of x with a y, and then I'm going to switch x and y places. So x equals y plus one and two y minus three, and then I need to solve for y and get it by itself. So from here, x times 2y minus 3 equals y plus 1. And I've got y's on both sides, and one of my y's happens to be buried inside this parentheses. So it makes sense to distribute in this case. So 2xy minus 3x equals y plus 1. 
uh, and then I'm going to bring the y's on the same side and then get rid of the, the 3x and move it over to the other side. So the 2xy I'll keep where it is. Uh, I'll bring that y over, which means it's subtract. And the 3x I'll bring over, and that's going to be plus. OK, so at this point, uh, I notice that I've got y's on both terms. And so I can factor out a y. It leaves me with 2x minus 1 equals 3x plus 1. And then I want to divide by 2x minus 1. So y equals 3x plus 1 over 2x minus 1. And that is our inverse. Yay! Okay, number 6 and 7, uh, we are just demonstrating that we know how to use transformation rules to graph um, our equations. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list of the parent points. Uh, so for here, that's really 2 to the x. So my parent points would be negative 1, 1 half, and then 0, 1, and then 1, 2. And then I'm going to set up a mapping. So all of my ordered pairs look like x, y. Let me try that again. So x comma y and they're going to go to so that x minus 3 really means add 3 to the x's and then add 4 to the y's. Okay, so I'm going to go into each of my points and do that. So if I add 3 to the x's, negative uh, 1 plus 3 is 2, 0 plus 3 is uh, 3, and 1 plus 3 happens to be 4. Uh, and then I'm going to go in and do the same thing to the y's. So 2 plus 4 is 6, 1 plus 4 is 5, and a half plus 4 is 4 and a half. And then I'm just going to plot those points. So 2 comma 4 and a half is right up there. Uh, 3 comma 5 is right there, and 4 comma 6 is right there. And Keep in mind there's an asymptote, so my graph should not go below 4 since that asymptote got moved up to 4. All right, then in number 6, sorry, 7, number 7, uh, I'm going to start by looking at my parent points. So it's an e to the x graph. So it's negative 1, 1 over e, uh, 0, 1, and 1, comma e. And the mapping here is the x's are going to be negative, so opposite of what they start off to be. And that plus 3 says I'm going to add 3 to the y's. Okay, so then I'm going to go in and just kind of do that. So all of my x's are opposite, so 1, 0, and negative 1. And then I want to add 3, so 3 plus 1 over e. Uh, 3 plus 1 is 4, and e plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to plot that. Now, I know where 0, 4 is, so that one I can kind of sort of estimate. And I know the idea behind the picture, so with these others, I can just do a little bit more of an estimate. So negative 1, okay, so E is about 2.7, so E is about 3. So it would be negative 1 and a little less than 6, not quite 6. And then 3 plus 1 over e. 1 over e is like 1 third, so 3 and a third. So 1 comma and then a little bit above 3. And so that time when I sketch it, again, there's an asymptote there. So the asymptote shouldn't, shouldn't go below 3. It should be a, kind of a flat horizontal line as we get closer and closer to 3.